morning, everybody. Paul Abernathy here. Welcome to another glorious day here in Texas or wherever you're at. As long as you wake up, it's a glorious day. Now, today on this mobile podcast, I'm going to answer a question that was submitted to me uh, asking me to explain the table 250.66 versus 250.66 A, B, and C and, and how they differ. Uh, and I'm going to keep it, since it's a mobile podcast, we'll keep it as very easy listening and explain the applications and, and, and how, this, how this all works out. So one of the key things to remember, and I always tell people to remember, is that you have to separate what is listed in 250.52 as the electrodes. You have to keep it separate, right, from understanding what's in 250.66, not only the table, but also in the charging information of 250.66, where it says that you you size the grinding electrical conductor based on table 250.66, except as permitted with 250.66 A, B, or C. So those are not really, A, B, and C are dealing with rod, pipe, and plate electrodes, concrete case electrodes and ground rings okay so it's important to realize that 250.66 is not talking about the electrode itself okay now there are for example with concrete case electrodes i mean there are if you're going to use a wire copper that it has the, the 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 portion the 20 feet that's in the concrete in contact with the earth that has to be a specific size, right? Um, it's kind of the same way that ground rods have to be 5 8 inch, or unless they're listed, uh, or, you know, or rebar being a half inch. I mean, there's different rules for the electrodes, right? Um, and again, with you talking about a water pipe ground, there has to be 10 foot in contact with the earth. It doesn't necessarily say the size of the water pipe electrode, right? It just has to be 10 foot in contact with the earth. Uh, as opposed to, for example, if you're going to use a pipe as an electrode, right? You're permitted to do that. If you're going to use a pipe, then it's got to be three quarters. So it's important to remember that the applications that deal with how you get from the grounded conductor or from your service equipment down to the electrode itself can be two different things, okay? Um, so where specifically to answer the question was, Paul, can you explain table 250.66 and how it differs from 250.66 A, B, and C? Okay. So first of all, I'll tell you that if you're an installer and you want to do everything based on table 250.66, you're free to do that. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, if you want to ignore... 250.66 A, B, and C for rod, pipe, and plate, concrete case electrode, and ground rings, and you and you just want to follow the table uh, based on the supply conductors. If, if you want to do that and just go with table 250.66 for your installation, then you're fine. You're more than happy to, to do that. The difference really is that if you have the different types of electrodes that are mentioned in 250.66 A, B, or C, okay? And your connection from your, say, your service to that electrode is not gonna go on to another electrode that would require a larger grounding electroconductor based on, let's say, table 250.66 that's not the same as the, the one that you're working with. Like if you were in A, it's rod, pipe, or plate. If, if it's not one of those, and you're going to go and continue on from those to another electrode, then you'd have a problem, right? You couldn't use A, B, or C. In this case, you couldn't use A. Now, we used to call that the sole connection, but we kind of, the code panel five kind of got rid of that language uh, and just says, you know, it, it, as long as you're not going on to another electrode that would require a larger conductor than what is given here for the electrode that's in you know, 250.66A, for example, then you'd have a problem you couldn't use A. Well, that's fine. Then you would revert back to using whatever 
the table was. And you're obviously going to size the GEC for whatever the largest one that would be required for whatever the electrode is in your daisy chain application. Now, if they're all ground rods, then you're fine. Okay? You get it? All right. So, anyway. So, I think the easiest way that I teach people this for them to have a really, you know, a mental understanding is if you're not dealing with the rod, pipe, or plate, if you're not dealing with the concrete and case electrode, and if you're not dealing with a, uh, a ground ring, then you just go straight to table 250.66 and you size your GEC. Now, GEC, um, we're getting away from acronyms in the NEC, uh, but GEC, grounding electrode conductor, and that again is from your, uh, if, you watch, if you look at 250.24a, you see there's a connection that gets made, and you're going from your grounded conductor down to your uh, your electrode. Now there is some allowances if you have like say separate gra uh, grounded terminal bus and equipment ground bus, but they're connected together with a wire or bus bar, uh, then you can take your GEC and land it to the equipment grounding terminal bus as long as it's connected directly to the grounded conductor terminal. Now, if you do that, and you're okay. You can land that GEC on the grounded terminal bus. The, 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 excuse me, the equipment grounding terminal bus. Okay? So you, you can do that if you meet those allowances. But in most, all cases other than that, you know, most services, they're all going to be, they're all going to be tied together. Right? Same bus. So, uh, at the end of the day, um, we're talking about the connection down to the electrode. Now, if you look at 250.66a, uh, if you have a ground rods, right, and of course you, you, you supplement your ground rod with another electrode of your choice, except for a water pipe ground, obviously, um, and you can supplement it, right, and follow all the rules in 250.53 and all this kind of stuff for the installation, you can do that. But I think more often than not, people, if you're going to go through the process of putting a ground rod in, then it's probably a, a high probability that you're going to do what? You're going to put another uh, ground rod in. I mean, that kind of makes sense, wouldn't it? Um, so if you go to the ground rod and you run and you follow 250.66A, then what it says is that grounding electric conductor is not required to be larger than a six copper. But it also says it could be not larger than a four aluminum. Although we do have a problem because if it is a ground rod, it has to be uh, driven fully eight feet in the earth, then you might, you'll have a problem with it being an aluminum grounding electroconductor, right? And actually making a connection to that ground rod because it's within 18 inches of the earth. And we've got rules about that, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't have an aluminum grounding electroconductor that goes to, let's say, a terminal block that's mounted on the side of a building that is higher than 18 inches, and then it changes over from there and goes down to a ground rod or something like that. So, I mean, there's other options. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about the NEC. I mean, there's, there's many options to do things. But staying in the, the concept of copper and keeping it within what you're probably going to do most of the time anyway, um, I'm allowed to run a six, and it doesn't have to be larger for that ground rod. I mean, the old saying, you can't put 10 pounds of crap in a five-pound bag, holds true here. A, a ground rod has been tested, evaluated uh, to, to handle only so much. Again, it's for lightning, surge, and transient. Uh, it's not to clear any overcurrent device. Uh, it's to stabilize voltage, connection, make that connection to earth. Um, and that's what it's there to do. Um, so again, never confuse that with connection to earth, trying to clear any overcurrent device. Okay. Uh, now we're not talking utility where they use the earth at a multi ground point system. That's not what we're talking about, folks. I don't even deal with that kind of stuff. I, I, I focus on the NEC portion. So as far as the NEC is concerned, uh, the National Electrical Code, you're not going to clear any overcurrent device. Do a little Ohm's Law at 25 ohms in a perfect world uh, at uh, 120 volts, and you're going to see that there is no way you're going to clear an overcurrent device. Okay, so you can kind of do that math if you want in your brain. But So what we're talking about is the grounding electrode system. There are many old homes that probably do not have a grounding electrode system, and they, they work fine. 
heaven forbid there's a lightning strike or surge or something that causes high power lines to come in contact with lower power lines that are supplying the dwelling. Uh, heaven forbid that happens, okay? And a lot of times in a lightning strike when it tears up the entire system, and chances are it had an inadequate uh, grounding electro system, okay? It's still not gonna keep the, the it's not gonna stop your system from working, right? Just because you don't make a connection to Earth, it's not going to stop your electrical system from functioning. I mean, we see it all the time in old homes that don't have grounding electro systems, okay? Now, voltages can fluctuate, but it, typically it'll work. I don't know I'm getting off track, but you know, I, I sometimes have to explain that stuff to folks. All right, getting back to the grounding electro conductor. So if I'm gonna go from the panel down to a ground rod, and then I'm going to go from that ground rod to a second ground rod because I have to supplement that ground rod unless I can show that it's 25 ohms or less. And no, you can't use a, just a standard ohm meter. You have to use a ground resistance meter, whether it's a clamp on or a three or four point fall of potential meter. You're gonna to have to establish this for the AHJ. Uh, who wants to do that? I might as well just go on and stick another six feet apart, stick another eight foot ground rod in the ground and be done with it, okay? Um, and so with that scenario, since I'm not continuing on from the one ground rod to another one that requires a larger size grounding electro conductor, in this case, it's a bonding jumper between those two, um, then it can still be a six. And of course, when those two electrodes are tied together, guess what? They act as one system. Okay, They act as one. And so there's no need to have anything. Now, the reason I bring this up is because since it's all kind of based on the size of the conductors that are supplying the system, um, if I had a 100 amp panel and I'm using 310.12 and it's applicable, uh, the 83% rule, and I'm sizing those conductors to that, and I could conceivably have where I have um, ground rods, and the grounding electro conductor could be smaller than a 6. Remember, 250.66 A, B, and C say that under those conditions, it doesn't have to be larger than what's posted. It doesn't prohibit it from being smaller than that, because what happens is, you don't have to use 250.66 A, B, or C. You're permitted to do that, okay? So I could just simply defer to the table in 250.66 and follow that. Now, some of the caveats that you'll run into is, you know, when you now have, let's say, maybe it's an eight gauge that you're running two ground rods. Okay, if it's using the table to do that rather than 250.66 A, then what ends up happening is now you run into this situation where the code says, okay, look, if you're going to do that and it's smaller than six, then you're going to have to protect it from physical damage regardless of whether or not somebody makes a judgment that it's subject to physical damage. So it's going to make you put it in a raceway to protect it. Schedule 80 PVC is the best option here, right? For obvious reasons. We won't go into that, but there's obvious reasons. You don't want to use any ferrous metal raceways and put a grounding electro conductor in it. Now you're going to have to bond both ends of it to the grounding electro conductor. Uh, and uh, otherwise you're going to create a, a choke effect on it. And it's, it's going to kind of make it kind of pointless to do it. So again, that's a whole nother podcast. But anyway, you schedule 80 PVC. But here's the thing. Most people are going to say, you know what, even though I'm permitted to use eight because of the size of the conductors that are supplying the system, I'm still going to run six because if I run six, unless it is subject to physical damage, then it doesn't force me to have to put it in a raceway, right? If I'm running it along the surface of the building and I'm running it down and, and it's, you know, it's not, I mean, who makes the determination that something is subject to physical damage, right? Well, that's going to be the AHJ and the AHJ is going to make that determination. But you know what? They're not gonna, you know, be a, a hard butt when it comes to that. If you, if it's evidence is obvious that it's not a situation where it's gonna be subject to physical damage, you know. So you know, one of those type of scenarios. But that some bitch can't drive a lick. Gee, crickets. 
So, you know, sorry about that. <laughs> road rage. I have road rage constantly. Boy, that, that dude couldn't drive a lick. So anyway, at the end of the day, yes, your grinding electroconductor could be smaller than what's given in 250.66 A, B, and C. Absolutely it could be, right? So that's the kind of things that you have to think about, you know, when you're learning the NEC and and you and you got to be careful with with who you listen to and you know um, and this has been submitted many times to the code making panels and they constantly come back with the same response. It, it, nothing prohibits it if you end up having conductors that uh, uh, would result in let's say the hundred amp service. And you end up having a grinding electroconductor that is smaller. The same thing would happen for the concrete and case electrode. Now, interesting, the electrode itself, if you're going to use a wire, has to be a four, right? But the grinding electroconductor going to it could be a six. Because those are two different things, right? You're creating the electrode is one thing. But the connection is totally different, right? So, you know, it, it, it is interesting how the code works, understanding that 250.52 is the electrodes, and then understanding that 250.66 is the connection to those electrodes, and then understanding that 250.66 A, B, and C are permitted applications uh, at where the grounding electroconductor, based on testing and evaluation, does not have to be larger than what is in those allowances. Now, again, if you want to ignore them and do it all based on 250.66, go for it. The table. Yeah, that's perfectly your, within your pur uh, purview to do that. All right. Anyway, folks, um, I made it safely. Um, got past my minute, minute of road rage. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, any questions? Remember, you can always go to paulabernanti.com. Uh, and submit your questions. I will do my best to answer them for you. We have over a thousand podcast episodes that you can listen to on our free mobile app. Uh, make sure you get it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, if you want to interact with me uh, on the mobile app, we have a chat now feature built into the mobile app that allows you to post questions and, and interact and post pictures. If you want my comments on something, all you got to do is get our free app and go and, and make sure you register the app. There's a little button on there that says, you know, to register your app. Once you do, um, then you can actually interact with me on our free mobile app as well. So there's many ways that you can interact with me. And, uh, and I love the interaction with students and uh, those that want to learn the NEC. Uh, I'm not interested in getting to a tit for tat with you. Uh, I've been doing this too damn long. Uh, I'm going to give you my opinion, whether you like it or not. I'm going to move on. So you can agree to disagree, or you can learn something from me. That's a choice that you have to make, not me. So hopefully you, uh, you enjoy the podcast, the mobile edition. Uh, I always love to do these little quick mobile ones. Uh, and until next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.